So I started listening to it, just as we're listening to it now. Letting the momentum and the music evoke feelings, evoke memory, evoke reflection. Maybe letting room for your words. So I ask you to let your inner voice speak. Your inner voice is you. What would you say if you could say anything? Maybe you're feeling. Words are superfluous. It's a matter of feelings. Or fleeting images, like the shadow of clouds racing over a rolling landscape, pristine and inviting. Invitation, evocation, invocation, incantation. Let it happen. Enter the dream, the dream that has been always waiting for you at the end of your aspirations. Invocation, evocation. I wrote this piece of music without having any words in mind. Let the words vacate. Let it make room for a larger picture beyond lingering semantics. This is audience participation. I wrote this piece of music recently. And I hope you liked it. Thank you. In the jailhouse, iron clanks iron, shuts out starry sky, live oak trees, fireflies, even mosquitoes won't follow. My daughters and I are disappearing into the sadness of stained mattresses, reeking toilet, no door, iron bars. I see the stranger, hair matted, mouth hard, circle, loom, ball her hands into fists. She demands, in for drinking? I feel like a cockroach she must crush. I try finding that of God, I think, in her, but something calms my breathing. Three-year-old Robin pinches my hand. She's holding tight. I cling to magic. If she isn't crying, this isn't happening. Shadows rim Robin's eyes. Kristen sobs. I haven't a hanky to wipe away tears or fold into a puppet mouse to make them smile. What is a mother but a voice? I open my mouth to improvise, to undo this night with song. Any note will have to do. Robin matches my pitch. Kristen, don't cry. We pick up pace, find song shape. Kristen drones around her thumb. Even the stranger rocks in rhythm. Kristen, oh Kristen, don't cry. Mummy is here. Robin is near, and Daddy is really close by. A guard peers through the bars. His raw hands pass me a paper bag. I press its hard cool. A bottle of milk. The stranger shakes her head. Well, I'll be. At home, the kids hate milk. I rip off the cap. They take turns swilling it down. Like a mother cat, I use my spit to clean their tear-streaked faces. This is how my mother cleaned me, how her mother cleaned her. We wrap the windless cell with song. Kristen, oh Kristen, don't cry. 
Mummy is here, Robin is near, and Daddy is really close by. Please don't cry. If the boss gets in the way, we're gonna roll right over him. We're gonna roll right over him. We're gonna roll right over him. If the boss gets in the way, we're gonna roll right over him. We're gonna roll the union on. Grandpa Morris is a union man. He sings as he steams oatmeal in the double boiler on the gas stove in our New York apartment. I am seven or eight waiting for my breakfast. His singing is more like chanting. He punctuates the chorus, swinging his right fist across his chest. My voice joins his. I swing my own little fist to roll the union on. Grandpa Morris is always the first one up in our household. My mother says that when people get older, they don't need as much sleep. Before making breakfast, he's already nipped around the corner and come back with copies of the New York Times, the Herald Tribune, and the Daily Worker, three papers he and my parents read every day. Morris makes breakfast for the whole family on school days. When the hot cereal is ready, he scoops it into bowls, meticulously, evenly sprinkling sugar over the surface. As we sprinkle, we sing. Put it on the ground, spread it all around, dig it with a hoe, it will make your flowers grow. We spoon our cereal from the edge of the bowl, digging a little trench just inside the rim. By the time we eat all the way around the outside, the rest of the cereal is cool enough to eat. I can't imagine what sprinkling sugar on cereal has to do with making flowers grow. But occasionally, as I eat, Mara sings a verse of the old Union song. If you want to raise and pay, I'll tell you what to do. You go and ask the boss for it, and he will give it to you. Yes, he will give it to you, my boys. He will give it to you. A raise and pay without delay. Oh, he will give it to you. Oh, put it on the ground, spread it all around, dig it with a hoe. It will make your flowers grow. I get class consciousness along with my oatmeal every morning. stars are terribly beautiful tonight And I'm going on a journey God knows where I've forgotten every reason I know Wrong from right, I don't care There are times I believe that all the fears in which we drown In a sea of cares do not need to come true Then I load my heart with promises that pull me down When they come due
The tragedy of life is not death, but what we let die inside of us while we live. Norman Cousins. It was, not, it was August 1944, South France, World War II. Sergeant's staff, faint, spellbound, blizzards of days untold, spin wildly before me. Beneath, the ground has come alive, clawing for my disparting soul, that once pranced freely beyond the unchained, heckling blows of this, our beloved command. I cudgeled my mind for reasons, for hope, for... In and out of consciousness, Sergeant's cold, sightless eyes began this final dance as we lie buried beneath blood-soaked remains of untold fortunes, splintered rooftops, fractions of life sputtering out the song we never knew, of promised years, days untold. There, before me, squad and fire teammate Corporal O'Reilly's journal of life turned upward handstanding. I don't know why this amused me. Comedy in the light of one's end. Such a strange world, weeping last hopes, reaching for another as pages pass, skipping, hustling by, blurred as life. Within, memories danced of sun past days, baptized each by warm shores beyond, of fancy freeness and seabirds, gulls I'm told, of horseshoe crabs and clam shacks, of untold lost love, now chasing infinite goodbyes. And owes lizard camellia and burrito his dog. In many ways, we all knew burrito and his love for camellia. We lived through Corporal O'Reilly's eyes in those drafted days, and I'm fixed to wonder how his final page shall find him just as it has found me. We are one now as you speak to me, page by undying page, singing one final song of better days beyond these cautioned, heckled, waged, spent ways. Known now by this forced, reckless state, by command's factioned tsunami of lies and this unending flight for life, by the hustled, cursed need for knowing every wretched detail not my own, how damned revelry and due diligence turns deeply to ruin and demise, which weighs our end. How failed passages to Eden shall ever be known. To this my day's end, shedding eye, eternal, this unpleased, thoughtful flesh, this wretched pain and sorrow and strife, beyond med bandstands of merriment and joy, beyond the sweet caress I knew of love, unfelt, beyond me now, beyond me, the silent song, silent. <sighs> Thank you. Do not say that I'll depart tomorrow, because even today I still arrive. Look deeply, I arrive in every second to be a bud on a spring branch, to be a tiny bird with wings still fragile, learning to sing in my new nest, to be a caterpillar in the heart of a flower, to be a jewel hiding itself in stone. I still arrive in order to laugh and cry, in order to fear and hope. The rhythm of my heart is the birth and death of all that are alive. I am the mayflyer, mayfly metamorphosing on the surface of the river, and I am the bird which, when spring comes, arrives in time to eat the mayfly. I am the frog swimming happily in the clear pond, and I am the grass snake who, approaching in silence, feeds itself the frog. I am the child in Uganda, all skin and bones, my legs thin as bamboo sticks, 
and I am the arms merchant selling deadly weapons to Uganda. I am the 12-year-old girl refugee in a small boat who throws herself into the ocean after being raped by a sea pirate. And I am the sea pirate, my heart not yet capable of seeing and loving. My joy is like spring, warm as it makes flowers bloom. My pain is like a river of tears, so full it fills the four oceans. Please call me by my true names so I can hear all my cries and laughs at once, so I can see my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true name so I can wake up so the door of my heart can be left open, the door of compassion. Chill fingers touch each leaf, crisping edges, crumbling veins with slow stealth. They rob the green, inflaming what remains as icy tips puncture bright moments, bringing a close to growth. Fall calls for swift endings, drawing down the dark hours. Frost hastens, stiffens brittle branches, bears twigs, sending leaves to blanket earth, crackling underfoot. They sing the old, cold song. Dark days descend, bringing rest. Earth folds into sleep, curled into burrows, into itself, drawing down the night. November hallows sleep, the winter of growth. Death is only a change of form. Life sleeps to wake again. What do you do for a living? They always ask it, the first question in getting to know someone. And the answer? From a list of words with fixed meanings. A living. That is exactly what it is. Some would say it's what I do, it's not who I am. But that's a lie to soothe the mind that demands freedom. How much to not have an answer for that first question? To not be forced like a misshapen peg into a hole? A living. How do I earn my life? In advertising from a fixed set of holes that I fit, of skills that frame my mind, and pay for shelter, transportation, clothing, food, the essentials of life? How much to be curious about every word on that list and to be so misshapen by this curiosity that no whole will have me? How much to not have to choose? But always a choice must be made to exclude all but one. This is who I am. This is what I do. One and the same, or else to live under a bridge and beg for essentials. How much to let my mind organize as it will and to walk into middle age unfocused in life, mind chaotic and uncast? How much to say nothing when they ask what you do for a living? Because no one will have me, misshapen peg as I am, by boundless curiosity and an untamable mind. Thank you. Some stories last many centuries, others only a moment. All alter over that lifetime like beach glass, grow distant and more beautiful with salt. Yet even today, to look at a tree and ask the story, who are you, is to be transformed. There is a stage in us where each being, each thing is a mirror. Then the bees of self pour from the hive door, ravenous to enter the sweetness of flowering nettles and thistle. Next comes the ringing, a stone or violin or empty bucket gives off. 
the immeasurables, continuous singing before it goes back into story and feeling. In Borneo, there are palm trees that walk on their high roots. Slowly, with effort, they lift one leg, then another. I would like to join that stilted transmigration, to feel my own skin vertical as theirs, an ant road, a highway for beetles. I would not, I would like not minding whatever travels my heart, to follow it all the way into leaf form, bark furl, root touch, and then keep walking unimaginably further. Until my love, our days have the ink of autumn drying in their veins, 10,000 leaves in the sun. Thank you. I'm here to tell you, brother, it's tough being a weed. The deck is stacked against us. No one wants us to succeed. We show up uninvited and grow up unattended. But we survive despite it, and we're damn proud of it. While other flowers get fertilized and groomed to be a source of pride, weeds got to make it on their own. Disrespected by the do-gooders, we just turn a deaf ear. Because we got strength in numbers and impudence to spare. <laughs> we don't get fed, so we don't get fat. We grow up wild and we grow up fast. 99 proof natural, enhancement free and spiritual. And a weed will never walk alone. <laughs> so bring on the mowers and the movers and the shakers. Bring on the preachers from the twilight zone. We'll dive in all together and clog their sacred wheels. Jam their blue-nosed blades and rattle all their bones. Bring on the wind and bring on the rain. We'll dance in a frenzy till the cows come home. Now we lean on one another and sacrifice for common good. But there are no rulers in the weed world, let that be understood. No crystal ball for gazing with the prize so plain to see. The winners are the revelers in the ecstasy of being free. Thank you. From the trench they charged at dawn And the enemy just mowed them down Love lost, buried under their gun Where the willows weep and the thrushes stream Poppies ponder peaceful scenes Silence lays souls to rest, tucks them in to forget. Life has found an old home. Life has found an old home. Life is coming home to be done. Hundred years, maybe more 
war till fields of grass forget a war. But old ghosts linger under the gun. Down below the war remains where unexploded bombs decay. These poison seeds half asleep. No man's land is theirs to keep. Take care and walk here tiptoe. Old pain's best not worn.